Good afternoon, Rotarians and guests. Happy August. Welcome to Toledo Rotary's Monday meeting. And I also have a warm welcome to Dick Epstein, who is our speaker today. Uh, next, I'd like to invite both Jean Dries and Aaron Lusk up to the podium. And Jean will start with a reflection, and Aaron will continue with the pledge. Good afternoon, Rotarians. Let's bow our heads, please. Dear God, today as we gather as Rotarians and guests, please help us take to our hearts the Olympic motto. Originally in three Latin words, those words are faster, higher, and stronger. And this year in 2021, they adjusted, amended the motto to add together. As our athletes compete and embrace these words, let us also do so. Faster to address the needs we see with our service before self attitudes. Higher as we accomplish our continued growth and ranking as one of the largest rot rotary clubs in the world. And stronger as we help each other accomplish great things together as many hands do in fact make light work. And finally, as they added the word together, let us continue our path as a club to embrace diversity and find all that have unique gifts to contribute many in the ways of time, talent, and treasure. For this I pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate it. I uh, just want to remind you that the last two weeks of August, the 23rd and the 30th, this Toledo Club will be closed and we'll be having Zoom meetings. And I believe the week after that is Labor Day weekend, so we won't be here for three weeks starting mid-August, end of August. Um, we're still looking for uh, our executive director and Dick Wolf is leading the search. We've got a few resumes. We're going to continue with that with some interviews maybe in a couple weeks and hopefully we'll figure out what we're going to do. And we wish Kathy well. She says sooner than later. Now I would like to have our program chair, Bob Tucker, please come and introduce our speaker, Dick Epstein. Thanks, Bob. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we have with us fellow Rotarian Dick Epstein, who's going to speak to us uh, about um, some risks and, and things that businesses are facing. He is the current president of the Better Business Bureau uh, that serves a 24-county area in northwest Ohio and southeast Michigan. Uh, he's been involved in the BBB for over 40 years and has been a regular guest on uh, local media talking about the issues you're going to hear about today. He's also a three-time past president of the Ohio Better Business Bureau uh, and has been elected to the Scott High School Hall of Fame. There's more information about him in, in your spoke if you'd like it. Uh, Dick and his wife, Grace, live in Sylvania, and we're very pleased to have him with us today. So, thank you. Well, thank you. I, um, I'm always glad to speak to Rotary, and um, uh, unfortunately, uh, this time, I'm talking about a scam that uh, nobody knows about. Uh, it's unbelievable to me how big this scam is, <clears throat> and how when I talk to people about it, I get this blank stare. They've never heard of it. They didn't know what it's called, and it has the worst name. I mean, um, you know, usually when I talk to uh, Rotary, I talk about these fun scams, the uh, grandma scam and the uh, bait and switch, uh, robocalls, catfishing. Uh, there's a lot of great scams out there that are a lot of fun to talk about, but um, not this one. Uh, this one's kind of boring. 
and the name is awful. So uh, the thing about it is it may be stealing money from your company right now. And that's important. So I'm going to talk about what's important, even if it isn't terribly entertaining. And that's, that's my uh, lot in life. Now, usually when I come out and talk to Rotary, I talk about the scams that everybody has heard of. I mean, uh, I was on, for the last year and a half, I was on the news almost every week talking about COVID scams. And you name it, I mean, uh, ma scam ads for masks and, and, and um, uh, sanitizer, bogus cures. We had people advertising all natural cures for COVID. We had people running social media ads for $150, they could get you the vaccine, vaccine or get you a reservation to get the vaccine. Uh, we had government grants for COVID that you $1,500, $2,000, and you send them the money and you get a $10,000 grant. Uh, unemployment insurance claims, you name it. I mean, COVID, a couple of weeks ago, we had a lady call us at the Better Business Bureau and she said, this man was driving by my house <clears throat> and he, he stopped the car and came out to see me. He said, those two trees you've got in, front, in your front lawn? She says, yes. He said, those trees have COVID. He said, uh, you gotta cut them down right away or they'll infect the trees all through the neighborhood. And for $800, I'll cut both trees down. So she said, okay, and he cut one down and she stopped him and paid him 400 and got rid of him. But then she called us and she said, do trees get COVID? Uh, news to me, I don't know, I, uh, I have no idea. Um, unending robocalls. If there's anything I hear from Rotarians about, <clears throat> it's how do we stop those phone calls? I mean, um, IRS is robocalling. You know, a few years ago I spoke to Rotary and I talked about a, uh, the IRS scam. It's going strong. It hasn't. It, it never takes a break. But um, um, I mentioned that I had done a lot of television about the IRS phone calls. You get these robocalls that say the IRS is going to file charges against you for back taxes, and otherwise you better call this phone number. So when you call the number, you get some fellow with a thick accent that you can't understand, and he claims he's the IRS and they're going to put you in jail because of back taxes. <clears throat> now I mentioned this, and because I talk about it on the news, I said these calls, the, the great majority of them come from Mumbai, India. Uh, that's, that's pretty much where a, a big chunk of these calls come from, and I said this on the news. So this fellow called the Better Business Bureau a couple hours later, and he said, I got one of those phone calls, and I called the guy back, and I said, uh, uh, what is it? What, what's the problem? He said, oh, you are in big trouble. We are going to prosecute you. You owe us a lot of money. This is the IRS, and we're going to sue you. And the consumer said to him, he said, wait a minute. He said, you're not IRS. You're just a crook calling me from India. And the guy on the phone was furious. He said, I am not calling you from India. I am calling you from Pakistan. <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of uh, social security calling to tell you that they're going to cut off your benefits. Centers for Disease Control calling. Your, did you know your car warranty was expiring? Did you, you, did you know that? A few, of you, a few of you have had that call, right? I have a 2005 Saab. You want to talk about a warranty? Uh, the electric company's cutting off your power in 15 minutes if you don't send the money. That, I've talked to so many business people that almost or did fall for that. And Publishers Clearinghouse. We had a call last week from a lady. Uh, she got a call from Publishers Clearinghouse that they were going to send her the million dollars. And uh, she, all she had to do was send them registration fee of, uh, I don't know, a few hundred dollars. And she called Better Business Bureau. What do you think? What do you think? And we said, no. Publishers Clearinghouse does not call. Uh, a few years ago, we had a, a husband and wife in Toledo that got a phone call from Publishers Clearinghouse that they had won the million dollars, but the story that they told was 
<clears throat> you've won the million dollars, but under federal law, we are prohibited from withholding taxes from the million dollars. So you have to send a deposit first before we can release the million. This couple in Toledo sent $30,000 to uh, New York State, thinking that they were going to win the million dollars. And uh, fortunately, we found out about it in time, and we helped them, and they got most of the money back. But it never ends. These are scams you know about. But the thing is, you know about ransomware and Bitcoin frauds and Ponzi schemes, great names. These schemes have great names. But the average losses per victim pale in comparison. Right now, the biggest consumer fraud in terms of losses per victim is catfishing, romance scams. Uh, typically a woman uh, over 50 who gets online and thinks she's in love with a man in Africa or Europe or whatever, and she starts sending him money. <clears throat> the average uh, catfishing scam, the woman loses an average of $25,000. Ransomware, 11,000, tech support, 9,000, won the lottery, 7,000. But the scam I'm talking to you about today, the average loss is almost $100,000. And who's the target? You are. You are the target of this scam. Well, not actually you. Actually, your bookkeeper or your accountant or your controller or your HR people, they're the ones, while you're here, the scammers could be hitting them. Because this scam is a very effective scam, but its name is terrible, and it hits businesses, not consumers. And so it doesn't get any publicity. The scam is called the Business Email Compromise. That's the name. What a boring name, the Business Email Compromise, B-E-C. And that's what it's called. In 2020, 1.86 billion was lost to Business Email Compromise scams, which is estimated about 45% of all internet fraud. And of course, these are just guesses. This is FBI guesses. We have no idea how much is really lost from these scams, but it's, it's amazing. A scammer impersonates a company executive and tries to trick an employee into sending money or personnel information. That's the scam. That, well, there's more to it than that, and I'll get into that in a minute. But really simple, they fool you into thinking they're the boss, they're you, and they fool your people into sending money. That's the business email compromise scam. It begins with hackers. Now, a lot of business people uh, assume that a hacker is some kid in his basement, um, you know, mom's, he's still living with mom, and he's hacking people, but these are not kids. The people who run these business email compromise scams are big deal sophisticated guys. They have names like Solar Winds, Silent Starling, Cosmic Lynx, Exaggerated Lion, Florentine Banker, and they cheat businesses all the time. They hack into your businesses and they do everything they can to steal your money or your personal information. They have hacked into Yahoo, Facebook, Target, Home Depot, Marriott, NASA, the Defense Department. Saturday, the Department of Justice announced that the New York City Department of Justice offices, 27 attorneys, are 80% hacked. All the legal documents, the position papers, all the negotiations, all the paperwork has been hacked in New York City in the Department of Justice and possibly some other Department of Justice offices. This, this was just Saturday. Uh, business email compromise started in Nigeria, but it's expanded and now about 50 countries do it. It's, it's going on in the Ukraine, Hong Kong, China, India, it's all over the place. Now, you'll see what I said here. It can be a team in Nigeria that is highly organized, professional, and patient. 
That's the big word. These guys are patient. They sit and they study your email. They study your company's email for weeks, months, years. When they're done, <clears throat> they know your name, all of your staff names, all their positions. They know all the companies that you do business with. They know schedules, the days you play golf, the days you're at Rotary. They know the email addresses. They know they have copies of invoices that you send, copies of invoices you receive. They got it all. And they're sitting on it just waiting to pounce. Now, <clears throat> there are six versions of business email compromise. And the most common one, the one that we see the most, the CEO sends a letter to somebody in the organization. And it's a friendly letter. It's an email that's very polite. And it's highly conversational. And the sender is in a big hurry. That's you. You're in a big hurry and you're sending a message to your bookkeeper or your accountant or your HR person. Betty, great news. While I'm here in Cleveland, I secured a much better deal with a new steel supplier. I need you to wire an immediate deposit of $200,000 to this email address to close the deal. I'm going to a meeting now and I can't be reached, but Betty, I really appreciate your great help and when I get back on Thursday, I'll have a special reward for you. I will definitely be back for golf on Friday. Thanks. Now, if you're Betty, what do you do? You can't reach the boss, but you know it's him because he, he knows about the golf Friday. He knows about the work you do. And all too often, Betty sends off the $200,000 and it's lost forever. Barbara Corcoran, anybody watch Shark Tank? She's one of the sharks, Barbara Corcoran. She's a real estate mogul. Her company bookkeeper got an email from her assistant that said they needed money to be transferred for a property renovation. They do this all the time. Barbara Corcoran does this all the time. The company sent the money and later discovered that the email address for the assistant was one letter off. They had tailored the letter so the, instead of an O, it was a zero. And then the, nobody caught it. And they sent $400,000 to the scammers. It was actually to China, but the money was funneled through Germany. <clears throat> and uh, fortunately, they were able to get a hold of the German bank that was handling it and get it stopped. And they got their $400,000 back. Um, the Nikkei, Nikkei Index, we all know about the Nikkei Index, it's like Dow Jones. and uh, The Nikkei, J Nikkei is Japan's largest financial media organization. One of their officers at Nikkei America received an email from his boss. The email said, you've got to send this money right away. And they transferred $29 million to a fraudulent bank account. It's never, we don't think it's ever been recovered. It's gone. Nobody knows about this scam. Look at how big it is. Look at how many businesses could be ripped off by it. And it's simply ignored. Or business email compromise, they impersonate a vendor. Ocala, Florida, the city of Ocala in Florida. Many of you have been there. The city's senior accounting specialist got an email from a construction company that was working on their airport. And the company explained they were changing their bank. This is a routine thing, right? Changing their bank and needed to update their city's records. They included a routing, an account number of the new account, and even copies of the voided check on the email. Everything was perfectly in order. A couple of days later, the construction company sent an invoice to Ocala, Florida <clears throat> for the new account and they promptly paid the $740,000 invoice. Cabarrus County, North Carolina, proudly announced it was building a new high school. The hackers catch that right away. <clears throat> During construction, the bookkeeper got an email from the general contractor, including a new electronic fund transfer um, account, along with all the correct lawyer letters, contracts, 
All kinds of documentation of the, of the relationship. All of it forged. Everything was fake. A few weeks later, the school board wired $2.5 million as payment to the contractor. The money disappeared. This is big stuff. That's serious money. Now, they don't just go for money. They go for tax information, personnel. This is going on right now. 2021, we're seeing a huge increase in this. You get personal information that they want to get. They want to get W-2s, for example. Tom, I'm in a serious meeting and can't be disturbed, but I need you to take care of this. I've been meeting with a major health care company here in Columbus, and they'll be preparing us a quote to move our health insurance. They need a list of the employees, including 2019 W-2s and earning summaries, as part of a strictly confidential acquisition. We are looking at potentially big savings, Tom. I need you to wire the W-2s to this address ASAP. Thanks, Bill. And they're sent. And the scammers get those W-2s. They can set up new charge accounts with every W-2. They can steal all the identities. They know how much everybody makes. They have social security numbers. They have addresses. Or they just take the W-2s and put them on the dark net and sell them. And somebody else sets up phony accounts in those people's names. It is a big scam, and it's very effective. Now, this next one is just very disturbing. This one really bothers me. Real estate closing tricks. If you're in the real estate business, you probably already know about this, <clears throat> but it is terrible. Taylor, a Denver home buyer, was purchasing a new home. Suddenly, he received an email appearing to come from the title company. He had been told that he should bring the money to the closing. But this email from the title company said, no, 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 we've got a change in procedure now. <clears throat> Here's the email address for our title company. Just wire them, uh, you know, email the money to us, wire the money to us at this email address. Tom, uh, uh, Taylor said, the emails appeared convincing and included my exact amount for closing. Well, of course they did, because the hackers had figured they'd already knew the dollar amount. I knew the exact amount for closing that had previously been discussed by the title company. I received the wiring instructions and wired just under $80,000 as instructed. Two days later, I was notified the money did not arrive, and that's when I realized my life savings had been stolen. I have seen examples where people who are closing on a house are told by the realtor, they're told by the title company, bring the money to closing, but then they get a, not a notice from the uh, title company, oh, no, no, we've changed the plan, and they send three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 in advance. And then what happens? And then they go to the closing and they have no money. It's gone. What do you do in a situation like that? Well, this, the hackers don't care. This is, this is life altering. This is big stuff. Direct de deposit payroll. Now, this is a simple one. Jane is a senior executive in a Chicago company. She noticed she didn't get paid. So she called HR and said, why didn't I get paid? They said, oh, we got an email from you a couple weeks ago changing your bank accounts and requesting that your payroll be redirected. The email even had the image of a blank check with the new account numbers on it. So we just changed your payroll address. This happens all the time. You, you see people changing addresses in your companies all the time. I do. But this was a complete scam. And the last part of the BEC scam, gift cards. Now you say, well, gift cards, what in the world? Let me give you an example. Emails were sent from rabbis to various synagogues around the United States. This is in 2018, I think. They were sent to 
congregations, synagogues in Detroit, San Francisco, Idaho, Tennessee, and all over. It said it was from the rabbi. Very realistic email. And it said, we are finishing arrangements for the holiday fundraiser, but I urgently need you to buy $2,500 in gift cards and then take the gift cards. You don't have to send me the cards, but we need them for the fundraiser. So just turn them over, scrape off the numbers on the back, and then take a photo with your phone and email them to me, and I'll be able to have them for the fundraiser. In one case, $400 was lost. In one case, $2,500 was lost. These people who are running the synagogues had no idea that the rabbis were not legitimate and it was a complete scam. Gift card deception is part of... The, the reason this works is because it's simple and it's conversational. Scammers really know their targets very well. Now, many of these scammers have set up what we call money mules. These are people that live near their cities, and if you're asked to send the money, you send it to the mule. For example, in, for us here, they might have a mule sent up in Findlay or Bowling Green. You send the money to the mule, he gets the money, and then he's already connected with Nigeria or Ukraine or wherever they're out of, and he sends the money overseas. So you think you're sending it to a local office, a local organization. Well, that's the scam. How do you stop it? And this is, <laughs> you, I think it's simple, but it's not. Remember now, you've got to have email security. That's critical. And, uh, you know, we, we ask for multi-factor authentication, where you get a number sent to you on your phone. I get this all the time. But I talk to businesses who have erected all kinds of barriers like this. And still, a lot of the emails get through. One estimate, the FBI estimates about 25% of the emails still get through, even though you've got all this protection, all these barriers. Why? Because these hackers know how to do it. They know how to sneak their emails through to you. Now, the second way to stop it, and this is, this is probably the something that hopefully all of you have already set up, but if you haven't, please set this up. You must phone and confirm any email request for money or for personnel information. Uh, a friend of mine works for a local bank and he said, oh, that's our policy for everything. I hope so. But believe it or not, even if it's your policy, even if, you know, I know he says he's busy, I know he says he's in a meeting, doesn't matter. You must confirm any request for money or personnel information by phone. Otherwise, it could be one of these scams. But, but, the, but the problem is this. Employee training and awareness is absolutely critical. Uh, I have seen example after example where companies have set this policy up, but not everybody gets the word. Not everybody knows. Or the emails are so convincing that the employee says, oh, well, I don't have to call on this. I know it's Bill. I know it's Fred. And they act anyway. And as a result, we see people losing their jobs. We see people, we, we have seen suicides. It's serious. But it's critical that you train your employees and you make sure they understand not to do anything without verifying it. Now, how do you train your employees? Well, I've got one idea. Better Business Bureau uh, put out a little thing called, is that email really from the boss? That's the name of it. It's a package with all kinds of details on the business email compromise scam. I've got copies of it on the piano out there. And help yourself. Please take one. Read it. Boy, oh boy, it's interesting reading. And you can read about these scams and others. Uh, you can read about all kinds of sophisticated ways to stop them, much more than I can cover here. But it's, it's the kind of thing you've got to have the people in your office, the bookkeepers, the, the money people, and the personnel people aware of and keep them aware of it. Because otherwise, 
This is a, a scam that's going all over the place. It's growing every year, and my goal is to keep you all from being victims. And that's my presentation. <laughs> Questions? I was going to ask you how often, you know, it happened to me like a 10 years ago, okay, somebody filed my taxes on my behalf, and how common is that? Because oh, I, I got a huge check in the mail, I didn't know what it was from IRS. <laughs> Instead of sending to them, they send it to me. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty common. Uh, the government has set up a lot of um, hurdles now to getting refunds, and that has done a nice job of cutting back on these. But I've talked to people, I talked to a, um, a contractor, and he was waiting for a $500 refund. And uh, he didn't get the refund. He got a letter from the IRS telling him that uh, he already had his refund, and it was for $8,000. He said, I didn't make that kind of money to get an $8,000 refund. He was flabbergasted. Somebody in uh, South Carolina had stolen his identity, filed in his name, and got, he got the refund. That's why at IRS time, at tax time, I'm on the news all the time saying, file early. The best way to stop this stuff is to file right away, as soon as you get your W-2, as soon as you can, because if you wait until later or near the deadline, it gives the scammer more time to steal your identity and file in your name. Yes, sir. A couple I know hired some movers to move their belongings to Texas. That was in April, and they're still yet to see their belongings. Can you tell us a little bit about those type of scams? What happened to the mover? The movers came in, took their belongings, took them to Texas, and they're holding the belongings hostage, oh, so to yeah. speak. Well, yeah, that's, you've got interstate moves and you've got uh, local moves. Um, you have to be careful with who you hire. You know, movers, there are wonderful movers. Uh, I, just, I just got a complaint, not a, not a moving complaint, a complaint on a plumber. And this woman hired this guy to give her an estimate for some plumbing, and he charged her $500 for the estimate. And his ad says, free estimates. <laughs> and uh, he, um, he won't give the money back. Now he says he's broke and he's in his parents' home and he's going to commit suicide and all this stuff. Well, the guy has a BBB rating of F. If this consumer had checked with us first and seen the F grade, she wouldn't have hired this plumber. And it's the same with movers. We have movers that you can, you can trust the estimate. They'll give you a valid estimate that's guaranteed or you have movers that will give you a quote over the phone, which is impossible. Uh, they'll tell you, oh, we're the cheapest in town, we're the lowest price in town. Once they get your stuff on the truck, uh, they highball you into outrageous prices to get your stuff released and charge you for storage while it's sitting there. Uh, we've seen some horror stories on that. It's, there are laws against it, the FT, uh, the F, what is it? What's the government agency that handles moving? It's, it's, it, I forget anymore. But they, it goes on, and a lot of times these moving companies are fly-by-night operations, and, and there's nothing we can do to, to get the stuff released. But otherwise, we work with the Attorney General, we work with the Federal Trade Commission, and um, we try to help people get their stuff released from the, uh, from the moving company. But, it's, uh, I've talked to people who have paid 10 times what the promised guaranteed estimate was because they just had to get their stuff. And uh, it's, not, it's not pretty. You gotta deal with a good, reputable company. Yes, sir. Um, hey, I love this presentation, thank you. Um, I had an interesting one about a month and a half ago where I received notice from the state of Ohio of my termination at my, work for, at my workplace which is interesting because I own the place and I didn't know I fired myself. Um, and so, and then a few weeks later, my office manager received the same notice where somebody had actually sent into the state of Ohio that we were now on unemployment benefits. Is that one you've been hearing recently as well? Every day. 
Okay. Every day we get calls from people who've gotten notices that their their unemployment has been filed, uh, and people call us up every day and they say, "What is this? I I, I never lost my job to COVID. This is all a COVID-related scam." Or they say, I, 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 I'm retired. I never filed for unemployment. Scammers are filing for unemployment in people's names. Now, what we can't figure out is why they use your name and the notice comes to you. How do they get the money? But we know that they do. And so um, this is one of the, you know, the government moved so quickly to set up these services for COVID that things drop to the cracks. Uh, we see this with the Paycheck Protection uh, Grants. You're seeing now prosecutions where people are taking Paycheck Protection money and uh, buying fancy cars and yachts and everything else with it. They never had any employees at all, but they got the grant. So it's a scam that we see all the time. And uh, just call us and we'll be happy to help you. You well. mentioned that to look careful the sender after the ad sign. Yes. You, what you've all said is watch the name of the sender because often the sender will, tell, will be a giveaway. We were talking before the meeting. I get messages that are personal messages and the sender's email return address is RU, which is Russia. And if you look at that or, or hover over it with your mouse, you'll see a lot of interesting emails coming to you that's completely scams. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much, Dick. What a great presentation and always very timely. Um, Dick always has some really interesting stories. Some are funny and some like this, the BEC is extremely serious. So really appreciate it. Um, we would like to present you with a book by past President Clint Mock, Historical Tales of Toledo. Thank you so much. And also we'll be making a donation to the Polios, Polio Plus Fund in your name. Thanks. Thank you. And now, dramatic pause. Chuck Man will make us laugh a little. This is a, uh, a video thing. So if you can't see the screen, you're going to wonder why everybody is laughing, theoretically. So you might just, uh, so we babysit grandkids uh, two days a week. A couple weeks ago, we decided to go to Plumber Pool, which is a public pool in Sylvania, Ohio. And uh, it had been a long time since I had done something like that. So we, the kids got in the pool. And 15 minutes before every hour, they would blow the whistle. The kids would just, lifeguards would take a break. The kids would get out of the pool. And they didn't understand that. We had to explain that. But it reminded me of this skit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the pool will be closed for five minutes. Exit the pool. Everyone out, I have a small bathroom break I have to do. <laughs> Full open in five minutes, thank you.
Thank you, Chuck. That was very entertaining. I'm ready. The city pools are open, everybody. <laughs> Next week, we have District Governor Mary Often Camp. Uh, she w she's a really good speaker. I think you'll enjoy it if you come and see her. Uh, today, we have two committee meetings. There is the Riaz the membership committee. And that will be in the Chelsea room, so you can follow uh, Jill, who we saw up here earlier, and the Finance Committee, which will be in the Shamrock Room. Both those rooms are on this floor somewhere down that away. I'm not sure exactly. Um, thank you, uh, Mark, and your guest, uh, Haas Joseph. And we are adjourned. <laughs>